Hey, what's up guys? Nick here, and we have a really cold one here in Tracktown, USA. Now, last week you saw me break four minutes in the mile wearing a pair of Vaporflies, but that was downhill on the roads. And so I've had a ton of people asking me, Nick, should I be wearing Vaporflies for my upcoming track season? Well, my answer might surprise you. It's absolutely no, and I'm gonna show you why today. This video is Vaporflies versus Spikes. Now today we're gonna to be comparing two shoes side by side, the Nike Zoom Vaporfly Next Percent and the Brooks Eliminate. Now these are my two absolutely favorite shoes, but for completely different reasons. They are both carbon fiber plated soles. Now the Eliminate is actually a spike that I helped design when I was sponsored by Brooks and it has a carbon fiber plate. And what I asked for was a very strong carbon fiber plate that ran three quarters of the width down the shoe. Now that plate is really rigid and when you plant on the, on the track, it gives you a lot back, not in a spring sense, but in a sense that you don't lose a lot into the track. And on corners, it's fantastic. Now I'm not paid by Brooks to say this, I'm not paid by any of the shoe companies any longer, so I can speak unbiased when I say that this in my opinion, is the best mid-distance spike on the market. But I would never ever run on a road with these if I was running a half marathon or a marathon. You know my go-to is the Nike Zoom Vaporfly Next Percent. When I'm running on the roads, I feel like I'm getting a lot of cushion, like I'm not you know, beating my legs into the asphalt. Um, it's very lightweight. If there's a drawback, it doesn't have a lot of traction. Um, it works well on dry asphalt, but on wet asphalt or certainly on wet track, it's gonna slip out a lot. Um, another drawback is this is a $250 shoe. So I'm not training in a $250 shoe. I'm training in something much cheaper. We'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so two carbon fiber shoes, but right now I think what we need to do is put them through a workout. So here is today's workout on this beautiful blue track. We have two by 100, one in spikes, one in vapor flies. Two by 400, one in spikes, one in vapor flies. And then what you've all been asking for, an all out mile on the track in vapor flies. And we can compare that with what I ran a couple weeks back in an all out mile versus subscribers. If you didn't see that, I'll link it right here. Let's have at it. All right, get these bad boys laced up. And for these hundreds and the 400s, my thought is, <sighs> fast but relaxed. I can't run all out on all these intervals until the mile. That's what we're all waiting for. Um, so I'm gonna run fast but relaxed. I'm gonna call it about a 90% effort. Let's see how these perform. They're already so squishy. Like that's my biggest complaint right now with these on the track. The track's squishy, my shoes are squishy. It's too squishy. Let's have 100 and see how it does. That was 1349, which I'm pleased with. It's also very similar to the time I ran on my hard, uncomfortable 100 in last week's video. But I'm guessing if I switch into those spikes, at the same effort, I'll actually be a little faster. Let's find out. All right, switching to the spikes. One of my favorite things about the Brooks Eliminates, one thing I was adamant on, see how the insole is stitched in there? Sometimes, especially in my Nike Vicks, that insole would come loose, especially when I was cranking on 800s. That can't come loose. Well done, Brooks. That was 1294, so what, a half second faster? That's significant. Let me tell you why I'm adamant about running in these and not these on the track, especially when you're really getting after it. Now guys, look closely when I'm really sprinting. I'm all the way up on my toes. My heel's not touching, my midfoot's not even touching. I want to be up on my toes. It's a more aggressive, faster way to run. Now, that's what I'm looking for. Look at that gap. This spike does a great job of getting me up onto my toes. You know, for a road racer, this does a good job, but it's just not the same. This big clunky heel doesn't allow me to get up right onto my spikes as easily. It does a great job of cushioning my midfoot while I'm running, 
that's why it's a great road racer. But it's not as aggressive. It has close to 40 millimeters of foam. This has now almost maybe five, not even. These are not comfortable to run in, but they are very, very good for running fast times. All right, now surprisingly, there wasn't a huge advantage in the Spikes versus the Vaporfly on a straightaway drag race like that 100 was. I'm guessing that the real advantage comes when you're on the turn. I talked about that carbon fiber plate and the spikes really helping you dig into the track on a turn. While this does have that carbon fiber plate, I just don't see this really allowing me to grip the turns. Let's run a couple 400s and see how they do. They performed a heck of a lot better than I thought they would. 62.35 for 400. That's really good running for me right now. I put the spikes on, same effort. Let's see where they come in at. Now I know no one's arguing that vapor flies were made for sprinting. Really they were made for road running. But I think there's a lot of misinformation out there right now that they're good for everything, that they're magic shoes that can make anybody run faster at any given distance. And by coming to the track like this, it really accentuates that various shoes are made for various purposes and you really need the right shoe for the mission. At the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you my favorite shoe or shoes for every single distance from 100 up to marathon and why I like them. So stay tuned for that. same effort and that was 59.85 a couple seconds faster when my form got sloppy and you guys are gonna say I have sloppy form I hear it all the time but especially when I got tired my form kind of got sloppy I really felt like the spikes wouldn't let me cheat I had to really focus on staying tall really focus on my form driving my knees to get everything out of the spike whereas the vapor flies because of that big heel that big cushion you can kind of sit down and get lazy Again, these are not forgiving. They're not comfortable. These are fighter pilots and that's an easy chair. And that's really what you want, right? When you're on the track, you're not looking for comfort. You're not out there for hours. You're out there for a couple minutes, maybe a few minutes, and you wanna get out there, get it done fast. And one last thing I wanted to show you with regard to those turns, here's my vapor fly on the track. You don't want your shoe to be able to do that on a turn. Here's the spike on the track. It's got metal pins for a reason. If you're cranking corners, do you want this or do you want this? Pretty easy answer for me. All right, now you guys will remember that about two weeks ago, I ran an all out mile versus my subscribers and I ran 439 for that mile. Um, that was in these, these are the uh, Zoom XC streaks, a cross country spike um, that I've had for a while. I love these for various purposes. But right now, let's find out what I can run for an all out mile in the vapor flies. This is gonna hurt a little bit. <laughs>
five minutes on the dot, point three. Five minutes, point three, that's 21 seconds slower than I ran two weeks ago. But you gotta consider that I'm a little tired from those 400s and I was in a race when I ran the 439. So take it with a grain of salt, but I hope what this video has done is showing you why this is not my number one choice when it comes to track running. Now as a trainer, they're just expensive. This is a $250 pair of shoes. Speaking of which, I am giving a pair away to one lucky winner. You can click the link in the description below to enter for a chance to win a brand new pair of Vaporflies in your size. But they're expensive, way more than a lot of other trainers that are just as good. And here's the other thing. Just like I chew regular run gum in training and save the extra strength for race day, so that when I chew my extra strength run gum or when I put my racing flat on, I know it's time to go. So that's how I feel about these. Cross country, you could really go either way. If it's mostly on the roads, maybe you want something like this for the race day. If it's on a grassy course, you're probably gonna wanna go with a cross country spike. So again, I have linked many pairs of shoes in the description below, everything from 100 up to a marathon. I am paid $0 by these running companies right now. And even though I was sponsored by a few of them when I was a pro runner, I'm paid $0 by the shoe companies right now. So I can give you my unbiased opinion. See you guys next week for something very special.